So what we're going to do now is we are going to be talking about the process of meiosis, but I will not be completing everything about meiosis in this particular video because meiosis has a lot of extra things to talk about. So don't worry, I will, you know, try to explain as much as I can for the process of meiosis. But just know that there will be some other videos where we talk about meiosis as well. So without wasting time, before meiosis happens, it has to start with interface. Now, interface is not important to talk about for your exams. When it comes to A2, uh, the, questions, the questions are more preoccupied with the nuclear division part, which means to say the meiosis part. Interface is just the G1, the cells will grow, the number of organelles will increase. The only thing I just want you to understand is during the S phase, the chromosomes will duplicate okay, or DNA replication will take place. So after the replication has taken place, it will undergo G2. We don't have to talk about that. So I'm just going to skip the interface part and I'm going to start with prophase immediately. Now, remember meiosis is divided into two parts, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And the purpose of meiosis 1 is to separate the homologous chromosomes. So what happens during prophase 1? And you have to be very specific. You have to say prophase 1. If you just use the word prophase when describing stages of meiosis, it will be wrong. You have to specify whether it's prophase 1 or prophase 2. So during prophase 1, it's the same thing that happens in mitosis where the DNA will supercoil or the chromatins will supercoil to form the sister chromatids. The nuclear membrane and nucleolus disappears and the centrioles move to the opposite poles. Just as a reminder, during the supercoiling, those chromatins will supercoil into that sister chromatid, those into that sister chromatid, those into that sister chromatid, the smaller ones, and those into that sister chromatid, which is the smaller blue one in this case. They are not actually blue or red here, by the way. We just put them as different colors to identify the set of chromosomes and also the homologous pairs. That's why we do it. So nuclear membrane disappears, nucleolus disappears, supercoiling to form sister chromatids, and the centrioles move to the opposite poles. This is the same as what happens in mitosis as well. The main thing that you need to know when you're talking about prophase 1 is as follows. The homologous chromosomes will pair up. That is very important to talk about pertaining to prophase 1. And when they pair up, they will. that process of pairing up is known as synapsis. Now, I need you to be a bit careful there. Synapsis in this case over here is not the same as the synapsis or synapsis you learned in um, chapter 15. That was S-Y-N-A-P-S-E-S, -S, right? The junction between the two neurons. This is S-Y-N-A-P-S-I-S, -S, okay? So just be a bit careful there. The process of the pairing up is known as synapsis, and they form something known as a bivalent. Now, what is a bivalent? As you can see, this is the homologous pair of chromosomes. How do I know they are the homologous pair? Those two chromosomes or those two sister chromatids uh, have the similar length and similar gene positions based on the lines. Uh, bivalent just means those two homologous, the homologous pair are just next to each other. The moment they're next to each other or they're sticking to each other, we call them a bivalent. This is what you need to talk about during prophase 1 and a process known as crossover may occur. I will explain the process of crossover in the next video. But for now, if a question comes out in the exam and they ask you to explain, explain the behavior of the chromosomes during prophase 1. Then you have to say uh, the chromosomes will supercoil to form the sister chromatids. The homologous chromosomes will pair up which is a process known as synapsis, and they will form a bivalent. Crossover may also occur as well. What is the significance of the crossover? Like I said, I will explain that in the next video. So, after prophase 1, it has to then go into metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, what exactly happens is the bivalents are the ones that line up along the equator. Now, at the bottom, I'm just drawing out mitosis okay so that's prophase in mitosis and during metaphase in mitosis the chromosomes just line up in a single line but in meiosis however metaphase one they don't line up in a single line the bivalents or the pair the homologous pairs are the ones that line up along the equator there is a difference over there that i want you to see now some students will then ask me the question if you notice the red 
chromosomes are the ones at the upper half and the blue chromosomes are the ones at the lower half. Can they swap places? Let's say for the one, for example, the blue and red one at the bottom, they're swapped places. Do you see the difference? Yes, that can sometimes happen as well. Okay, that process is known as random assortment or independent assortment and I will explain that later too. For now, all you just have to mention during metaphase 1 is the bivalents will line up along the equator or the homologous pairs line up along the equator and random assortment may happen. Spindle fibers will also attach to eat the centromeres of the sister chromatid. Okay, so the next phase after metaphase 1 is going to be anaphase 1. And during this moment over here, what exactly happens is the spindle fibers will shorten and they will pull the homologous pairs apart. So I also want you to see the difference on how it happens during mitosis. You see, during mitosis, the spindle fiber is attached to both sides of the centromere. Okay? Um, but, and so when it pulls apart, it breaks the centromeres or it separates the centromeres and the sister chromatids will, you know, it, it will break into half. But in anaphase 1, that's not what happens. The sister chromatid remains intact and it just pulls the homologous pairs apart. So I need you to understand the difference between anaphase of mitosis and also anaphase 1 in meiosis. So what happens when the pulling happens? The entire sister chromatid gets pulled apart. This process is known as anaphase 1. And how do we describe anaphase 1? The homologous chromosomes separate to their opposite poles. And when they move to their opposite poles, the nuclear membrane may, may reform. And this is called telophase 1. And after cytokinesis, what actually happens? It produces two haploid cells. We call it two haploid cells because you have already separated the homologous pairs. As long as you've separated the homologous pairs, they are referred to as haploid cells. But remember, meiosis is far from done because there's also meiosis 2. And during meiosis 2, remember I told you, it's to separate the sister chromatids. So during prophase 2, what may happen is the centrioles may replicate. Again, we don't care about that. Centrioles move to their opposite poles. Metaphase 2, the sister chromatids line up along the equator and the spindle fibers attach to either sides of the centromere, both sides of the centromere in this case. All right, and anaphase 2, the spindle fiber pulls the sister chromatids from both sides, which causes the sister chromatids to break or the centromeres to separate, and therefore the chromatids will then separate to their opposite poles. And telophase 2 is what happens when the chromatids reach their opposite poles, the nuclear membrane reforms, and after telophase 2, cytokinesis happens. Meiosis 2, if you notice, is kind of like mitosis, isn't it? Because the sister chromatids line up along the equator, spindle fiber attaches to both sides of the centromere, anaphase 2 is just like the normal anaphase, where the chromatids will separate. And, of course, they will then produce something called four haploid cells. So, let's do this all over again as a summary. We have a cell here with four chromosomes. Remember, the cell will then undergo DNA replication Okay, during the interface part. We don't have to mention the interface. When you're asked to, to talk about meiosis, do not mention anything about the DNA replication. I'm just talking about the DNA replication just because I want to. So during the DNA replication, the chromosomes will replicate to form the sister chromatids. Now, during prophase 1, the keywords over here is they will supercoil, yes, and they will form bivalence. Bivalence just means the homologous pairs are together or paired up together. A process known as crossover may occur. I will explain crossover in the next, uh, in the not immediately the next video, but the next few videos, okay? Now, during metaphase 1, the bivalents are the ones that will line up along the equator and a process known as independent assortment or random assortment may occur. Now, during anaphase 1, the spindle fibers will pull the homologous pairs and the separation of the homologous pairs will occur to their opposite poles. Telophase 1 and cytokinesis will then, remember, telophase 1 is just what happens when the homologous pairs have separated 
then the sister chromatids have moved to their opposite poles. Cytokinesis is cell division, and of course, they will produce two haploid cells. When it undergoes prophase 2, okay, uh, prophase 2 is just like normal. Metaphase 2 is what happens where the sister chromatids line up along the equator, spindle fibers attach. Anaphase 2 is the separation of sister chromatids. So the individual chromatids move to their opposite poles. Cytelophase 2 is what happens when the chromatids reach their opposite poles. And of course, just to show you, those two chromosomes will go to that pole. Uh, those two chromosomes at that pole those two chromosomes at that pole, and those two chromosomes at that pole like that. So cytokinesis is cell division, and they will produce four haploid cells. So notice, the um, if you notice, the original cell was a diploid cell, which is two sets of chromosomes, which is equals to four chromosomes, right? Two sets equals to four chromosomes. But when it produces the cells at the bottom after meiosis two, they produce four cells, but each cell has one set of chromosome, or N, which equals to two chromosomes, all right? So that's why it's called the haploid cell. This is the overview of meiosis that you need to know if they ask you in the exam. And sometimes they may actually, they, they may just give you a diagram like this, and then they'll say, what stage of meiosis is this? The moment you're still able to see the homologous chromosomes, you know that this is in meiosis 1. Because meiosis 1, the homologous chromosomes are going to be separated, or will just be separated. But the moment you see individual sister chromatids, and you don't see the homologous pairs anymore, then you know that this cell is probably in meiosis 2. Right. So as an example, I'm just going to show you this cell over here. Is this prophase 1 or prophase 2? This one is in prophase 1 because you can see the homologous pairs right there. What about this one over here? You can see separation, but is this anaphase 1 or anaphase 2? This is probably anaphase 2 because the sister chromatids are being separated. So that's what we have to understand about meiosis 1 and meiosis 2.